What the bleep is GDPR? Hi, I'm Rob Onspock from Onspock Media. And for the last couple of weeks, my inbox, my email inbox, has been flooded with new opt-ins, new requests for me to go back in and say, yes, I want their information. This is all in response to protocols enacted by this G. DPR, General Data Protection Regulation, coming out of the EU. So how does it help you? You know, if you're a U.S. business, how does this GDPR help you? You know, what's it supposed to do? Well, I'll go into some of the things that it's supposed to do, and then I'll tell you how I feel about it at the end. Fair? All right. Well, let's just jump right into talking about what the bleep GDPR is. The General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, you see, I always mess up words. GDPR comes out of the EU. It's got this fancy number, 2016679. It's a regulation in EU law on data protection and privacy for all individuals within the European Union. It addresses the export of personal data outside the EU. See? right there is protects people in the European Union. So I'll get to how it affects people outside of that area. General data protection regulation will come into effect well, in, in force May 25th. So if you're watching this today, that is tomorrow. It will affect companies located <clears throat> in the EU, but also those that have operations and customers there too. Kind of affects me. The key principle of GTPR is giving consumers control of their data or implicit control. You know, it's not really control. There are fines of up to 4% of total global turnover if rules in the GTPR are breached. As you can see, I'm really not a fan. Uh, did I miss one? No, nope. that says. Major focus of GDPR is on conditions of consent, which have been strengthened. So companies will not be able to use vague or confusing statements to get you to agree to give them data. Firms won't be able to bundle cons consent for different things together either. Okay, that sounds fair, I guess. Um, consent must also be easy to withdraw. For children under 16... A person holding parental responsibility must opt in <clears throat> to data collection on their behalf. Another rule will make it mandatory for companies to notify their data protection authority about a breach or a data breach within 72 hours of first becoming aware of it. Well, we all know how that worked out with Data Analytica. 72 hours turned into several years and, you know, they just, it, it, that is vague in itself. And for people 16, well, we all know that kids today have cell phones, you know, when they're in kindergarten and they're getting on Instagram and all these other things. So to, as a parent, that is not going to work. It's just my opinion. Well, okay then, moving on. An organization in breach of GTPR laws will be fined up to 4% of annual global turnover. I did mention that or 20 million euros, which is 24.6 million US dollars, whichever is bigger. If you're a small company, you know, doing under $100,000 a year, and you get hit with this fine, how are they gonna collect it? Even if you're a business, big business, how is enforcing this fine outside the EU gonna take effect? Okay, so this is the last slide. When it comes to user data, consumers will have more control. You'll be able to access the personal data being stored by companies and find out where and for what purpose it is being used for. You will also have the right to be forgotten. This means that you can ask whoever is controlling your data to erase it and potentially stop third parties processing it too. Another provision of GTPR allows people to take their data and transfer it to different service providers. 
Okay, well, let's break all that down because it's nonsense. First of all, consumers won't have more control because there are so many different policies, procedures, everything that, let's say I, I wanted my data from a company. Do I call them up? Do I email them? Do I write them a letter? How easy is it to get my data? Because we already know in the United States to try to get data from anybody, it's like climbing a mountain. It just, it's not that easy. And it says you'll be able to access personal data being stored by companies and find out where and for what per Find out where? Yeah, it's in some storage bank, in some computer room, in some closet on a third floor. They're not going to give you the exact area where you're from. U.S. says you have the right to be forgotten. Okay, that's... Google can already do that. So, so how am I going to be forgotten? Because, you know, we already know how these companies work. If I say, well, you know, I want to be forgotten. But the next time I buy from them, I'm not forgotten anymore. Now I'm back in the system. So, to me, there's too much vagueness in this whole policy. It says, you can take your data and transfer it to a different service provider. How's that going to work? Okay. Are they going to put it in a little data packet and email it to you? Or are they going to put it in a flash drive? Send it? How is that information going to get to you? And then, are you going to be able to physically take that somewhere else? Or do you have to then email it? So, To me, this reminds me of Y2K 18 years ago when everybody was panicking because their computers would go from 1999 to 2000 and companies around the world spent billions of dollars. They all acted like Chicken Little and the sky is falling and nothing happened. So now you have the EU wanting to step in and I understand that privacy nowadays is paramount. I get it. You know, Canada tried it with the can the can spam laws, you know, years ago, and I get now more email. I get more spam, and people that I know in Canada get more spam than they did prior to this law. There's always gonna be someone out there circumventing these policies, these procedures. And honestly, if you're a company in the United States, does this affect you? It can, yes. So if you're a mom and pop store in Boise, Idaho, selling, I don't know, watches or watch repair stuff, and somebody from Germany orders from you, and you don't protect their data, you're in violation of the GDPR. I know. Doesn't seem fair, does it? But we now live in a global economy. But here's the thing. What's going to prevent Russia or Canada or South America or any of these other countries out there from making up their own laws, their own data protection regulations? And now you have multiple companies having multiple rules and they interfere with each other. So now you got to remember this person's rule and that person's rule and this person. We're getting into a slippery slope of countries making up rules that affect other countries that have no way to police that information. So I'm not saying don't honor the GDPR regulations. I'm saying put in the protocols on your own site that reflect if you do business in the EU that you're protecting their their privacies. But also 
take into consideration that most of us are small businesses. Most of us, you know, maybe collect information for emails or, you know, some type of web purchase that they bought on your website. Is it worth getting a fine of $20 million to sell one watch to somebody in Germany? Maybe not. You know, if you're worried, if you're really worried about this whole GTBR stuff, you can contact your web hosting service. I mean, we've done this to our own uh, clients. And we've isolated their website so it only shows up in the United States. Now they're not affected by GDPR in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, like I said, we live in a global economy. And the reason I built my business was to scale outside of my local economy to be bigger to be able to offer my services to everyone, you know, not only in my local area, but in my state, in my country. And now I have clients all over the world. So yes, I have to instill these policies into, you know, my business. And I don't like them. I, I think they're, they're, I, I understand the concepts, but I just don't think that they are scalable. I don't think they're doable, and I don't think that they go to the extent to make it easy for consumers to get their data. Nor do I think it's, it's right for businesses to jump through hoops to protect all this data when most of the time it's not, it's not credit cards. It's not because we, I use a third party processor. So I don't even collect credit card numbers. I, half the time, I don't even see that information. But there again, you know, the vendors that we use, the, you know, they all have to comply. So I think what this is going to do, and it's already having effect on businesses. Some businesses are shutting down. Some businesses can't comply. There's no way that they comply. Uh, the who is directory on the internet that I use frequently to find out information on, you know, who owns a website, where it's hosted from, you know, all this information could potentially be shut down because that information is there without the knowledge of someone else. So, um, you know, I hope you found some of this helpful. Maybe I confused the hell out of you even more. Who knows? But I think it's your responsibility to read into more of this GTBR if you do business globally. You know, if you need more information, be glad you can you can visit me at unspockmedia.com and I can kind of go through all this with you. You know, but I'm learning this as I go. So, you know, I might have just a little bit more information than you, but I'm also skeptical about how this is all going to work. So anyway, have a great day and I hope I didn't scare you too much and, um, you know, just, just keep it simple. Adios.